Ahoy there, and welcome back to Domance Dawn. I'm Luke Hare. He, him, sometimes they, them, and I am joined on this very special episode by my wonderful co-host, Janine. Hello, Janine Jean is me. Um, my pronouns are she, they, and I don't have a third thing to say. And we're also joined by a third person today. Hello there, I am Eric, a.k.a. Rhythm Bastard, a very good longtime friend of Luke's, and, uh, FUCKING PRONOUNS! Uh, no, they're he, him. Uh, I thought we were going to have a nice, quiet PBS-style show, but I forgot that I brought a motherfucking rocker to this presentation. Hell yeah, you did! <laughs> what do we do on this podcast, Luke? This is a podcast where we look at One Piece and The Simpsons as contemporary animated shows, and then we cast One Piece characters using Simpsons characters. Sounds like a pretty interesting premise for a podcast. Do it, you know? I watch, watching a lot of these like old older Simpsons episodes right around the time I stopped watching it. Um, it, it was kind of good to go back to, you know, be in that space, well, regularly tuning in on Sunday nights. Tell us more about yourself in brief, Mr. Bastard. Uh, well, uh, you can just call me Rhythm. Mr. Bastard was my father, and I am a hardcore nerdcore punk musician. I make a lot of songs based on stuff like Magic Gathering, you know, comics, video games, and also just like a lot of cool musical experimentation. Um, you can find me pretty much anywhere under Rhythm Bastard, and I also play a lot of conventions, you know, all throughout the country. Um, and I do a lot of composing work. For example, I've done a couple of, you know, Luke's other podcasts, and I played, uh, Oi, the punk drow monk on his, on RPG Pals Club. That you did. We ran that for, like, four Four years? Four years. Yeah, wow. Time flies. Yeah. Podcast. Uh, so what is your experience with The Simpsons? I remember watching, I mean, it was like just on, you know, all the time when I was younger, you know, after school reruns, then I'd go to catch the new episodes every Sunday. So it was very much like part of my life. But then as, you know, I started watching more things online and just different, more adult shows, I was sort of fell out with The Simpsons. And the episodes we selected are probably one of the last few that I remember actually sitting down Sunday night and watching. Fair enough. Yeah, like, I don't know if it's just people in my generation or what, but this was kind of like where I started to be become less familiar with the episodes, or at least this specific season, because we're getting to the end of another season. Right. Uh, what is your history with One Piece? Um, my history with One Piece, I saw the first couple episodes when it first premiered on, you know, like whatever Saturday morning block was on back in 2004, but... Fox Kids, the Fox yeah. Box. Yeah, Fox Box, whatever. And that was... Um, like, and I wasn't, like, super interested in doing another long-running, you know, anime series that was more my younger brother's thing, because, you know, mm -hmm. he'd watch Dragon Ball Z and all that, and I was, you know, I was watching The Simpsons and, you know, playing games and pretty much everything else. So I saw maybe a couple episodes of it, um, but I think the episodes of that we watched, I pretty much, kn I wasn't, like, super lost, because I kind of know everybody's deal mm -hmm. through cultural osmosis. Yeah. Except yeah. for Nico Robin. Except that she's apparently Jamie Lee Curtis's favorite character. Yes. But not the character who Jamie Lee Curtis is most likely to play anymore because she has admitted that she is too old to play Nico Robin. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. She gets to be the sexy gill. Exactly. All right. Well, uh, now that we have set that up, uh, we have some housekeeping to do because we had a... God damn it. We had a dog! Uh, 
Two episodes ago, I said that Alf Clausen was let go after The Great Gatsby, but he in fact still continues to do occasional music. He just no longer is the primary musical director for the show. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, I I was just listening and editing and was like, oh, I made a blunder. I made the fool's blunder. So. Uh, these episodes of Simpsons and One Piece initially ran between April 17th and June 12th of the year 2005. These include the Seven Beer Snitch, where Marge finds out that Shelbyville looks down on Springfield, so the city hires Frank Gary to design a concert hall. When it flops, Burns turns it into a prison, and Homer ends up getting arrested when Burns needs to fill the prison up. Homer becomes a snitch for the benefits, but Marge accidentally reveals that he is the snitch, so the other prisoners try to set up an opportunity to kill him, but Marge intervenes, convinces the governor to let the prisoners go, and most of them end up on a garbage barge death match. And the B-plot is Snowball has a secret family, and there is no conclusion with it? Yeah, I was watching uh, Patrick H. Willem on YouTube, his, like, breakdown of the perfect, you know, Simpsons episode, the one with the lemon tree, mm -hmm. and, like, how there's just everything just kind of contributes to the episode in some way. This was like, oh, well, the Shelbyville thing, we need to be more sophisticated. Opera House, Opera House prison, like, you know, it, it probably could have started a little bit later in the thing. Also, I have in my notes, a uh, heinous coked out man balloon to the tune of 99 red balloons. Heinous coked out man, man balloon. balloon. That would probably come, that will come up later in a recap. I can't wait till that ends up potentially being our episode title. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is weird how like they like almost all of these episodes don't have a conclusion for the B plot. And, like, painfully, noticeably so. Yeah, uh, I, I thought that it was an interesting idea on how maybe it's a criticism of how we would rather use our public money to incarcerate people as opposed to supporting an appreciation for the arts. Yeah, and it's like, well, we already, and they leave right after the dun 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 so, like, their, I guess, musical repertoire is very limited. Because mm -hmm. it's like, well, we only know this through pop culture. We're done. We don't need anything else. Bye. Yeah. I mean, this this is a very confusing uh, thing for me in that Shelbyville definitely is the rival city, but it always flops between if they are more advanced or less. Like the Shelbyville we did see in the previously lemon mentioned toy. lemon, yeah. Um, it does seem kind of like an off similar, if not, you know, dollar store version of Springfield. I uh, we've also heard like other bits where like there's a Springfield war and Springfield takes the war harder, but Shelbyville is like better equipped. And yeah, I I, I think for the purposes you need your rivalry angle and so kind of having them look down on Springfield and having Springfield Billy makes sense. Yeah. Uh, the second one is Future Drama, where Lisa and Bart see into the future with Professor Frink's invention. Uh, in that future agenda, Bart's girlfriend breaks up with him because he has no plans, so he gets a job at the Quick E-Mart. And while on a delivery, he ends up saving Mr. Burns' life. Burns gives Bart's Lisa uh, Burns gives Bart Lisa's full ride scholarship to Yale, but when he sees how miserable Lisa would be in the future if she doesn't go to college, especially when she stays with Millhouse, he decides to give her back the scholarship. And there's a B plot about Homer and Marge being split up but getting back together. This one weirdly is the most canonical Simpsons future, and is something that they keep going back to. Or at least the least contradicted, because like this is still halfway through the run of the series, and The Simpsons has been on for a very long time. It has, but like Jinda becomes a recurring character in future scenes, and Jack to Millhouse uh, is going to say a thing because you know 
Millhouse is trans and just won't admit it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I, my notes from this episode is Jenna seems pretty cool and also the kind of girl that would outgrow Bart the second they graduate. So uh, let's see. Patty and Selma get the furry surgery, furry and surgery in all caps. And uh, guys like Millhouse, A, don't work legs or lats and don't know what body parts they are. They just make a habit of going to the gym and that's kind of like their thing. It's not like, you know, they're, they're bodybuilding or they're training for something. It's just that, like, they just get the ego boost from saying, I go to the gym. Yeah. I mean, you seem to be a very well-rounded buff man. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But, like, some, but I take notes. You know, I regularly document things. And sometimes I just change shit up. Like, today I did uh, – whatever. I'm not going to get into my workout routine. But... <laughs> I'm no fucking millhouse. <laughs> Janine, you got anything to add in here? Um, as as the futures that I've seen so far, um, I do like this one the best. It, it takes place, and if the date is right for the for um when it was produced, the far off future of 2013. Wow, what will that be like? And um, years ago. <laughs> My highlight favorite point is Bart getting called a racist cracker and then kicked in the face. Um, yes! <laughs> it's like the, the episodes themselves aren't super, like, solid, but there are these little, you know, little little goofs, little gags, little, like, bits that, like, really get a solid laugh out of me. And that was mm. one of them. Uh, after that, we have Don't Fear the Roofer. Oh, actually, a... hold on. Yeah, I have a yeah. point to make now that I remember it. This is the third or fourth time we've seen Ralph or a version of him get high. Mm-hmm. I still don't see Ra- Ralph high in I- any of these forms in head shops. I mean... No one wants to think that they're Ralph when they go into the head shop. Why would they have that as their herald? Mr. Rolls the Banana. I don't know. I like Ralph. When I want to get high, I want to reach that level. Janine likes Ralph. Janine likes Ralph. By the way, I did take an edible in this episode. It will come up again. <laughs> I, I don't I know when it's going to hit, but it, yeah. It will hit at some point. Fair. Well, your your point has been lodged, and when we all get our custom uh, pirate ships, you can have Ralph as your mass engineer. Just like Ralph on a bong or something, man. I would search on my free computer, but that is also my work computer. So I, I feel and like if, I should and have... I would have pushed so much harder getting Opium Ralph for that one character that one time if I knew that like we would have more versions of Ralph getting high. Getting highs like this is this is this has weirdly become like very important. Yeah, I, and I feel crazy because like nobody else could uh, give a shit. It's Ralph getting high, just like just a s- simple one-off gag, but they keep doing it because children getting high is funny. I mean, there is a Ralph Wiggum Funko Pop that you could mod. Listen, I'll, 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 I'll send this to my buddy Matt Groening, and... Well, no, he's not my buddy. I don't want to be a buddy on anyone whose flight logs have been found on uh, certain lists. But, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Mm-hmm. What do we got next? 
Uh, up next is Don't Fear the Roofer. Uh, after a hole in the roof causes a bunch of issues uh, between Homer and Marge, Homer ends up making friends with Ray, a roofer in the bar. Nobody else is able to ever see Ray, despite Homer and Ray constantly uh, hanging out. And so people begin to question Ray's existence and Homer's sanity, which eventually leads to him getting unethical treatments for instability. But it turns out that Ray is real, and they tortured Homer for no real reason, and the, the plot is Santa's little helper becomes older because he spends too much time in the retirement castle. Once again, not like an actual B-plot. It's just like, oh, hey, here's like three scenes. It's like a runner at best. Yeah. Uh, I I actually enjoy Ray and Homer's friendship. I enjoy some of the bits around this episode. I enjoy <laughs> that his name is an anagram for imaginary. Yeah. And it's like not a bad, you know, cameo. Mm-hmm. It's you know, like Ray Romano kind of fits this character as a blue car- he, he fits the character. It's not like, I mean, the name obviously, but like there's at least that little teensy little rug pull with the imaginary thing. So it's like, oh, okay, they at least went there with it. So it's not like Lady Gaga gets a premonition from her psychic that Lisa Simpson's in trouble. Mm-hmm. It's not the Elon Musk episode. Yeah, exactly. Uh, my notes from this. Professor Frink's Jerry Lewis is getting way too obvious. Um, let's see. He I mean, not- they had, at this point, they had had Jerry Lewis play Professor Frink's father, so. That's true, yeah. Uh, let's see. He must smell leftovers. We called them senior citizens. That was a good bit. <clears throat> Why is that, you know, it's just the little bits that make mm-hmm. me... Uh, let's see. Um, I like so as an engine. My day job is an engineer, and I really like that um, that that joke at the end with Ray, where it's like, "Well, why do you keep abandoning people and just being a scummy asshole?" And it's like, "That's easy. I'm a contractor." <laughs> that got a good laugh out of me. Yeah, exactly. Uh, mm-hmm. And one joke I didn't. I, I don't know. I thought could have landed better was Stephen Hawkins thing at the end. Where, like, I guess there's the setup that the reason why Bart didn't see Ray was because, like, he was carrying all the tiles. But mm-hmm. then Stephen Hawking comes, and it's like, oh, well, it's just some light refraction shit. So it's like, that that was, I guess, supposed to be a another, like, a misdirection or something. But it, it was, like, too far and too complicated of a thing to, like, or wasn't brought up recently enough to be... Well, no, that, I mean, that was the joke, though. I mean... Like, you, you get Stephen Hawking in for the first joke where it turns out that he now owns Moe's. Mm-hmm. Or no, he op- he opens a Little Caesars next to Moe's, which is honestly a brilliant idea. Because he is going to do bang-up business there. Also, yeah. Little Caesars under it. Pizza, pizza. Um, yeah, like, you bring him around for the end. Yeah. Janine. Any comments on this one? Ray Romano does a good job. Mm-hmm. I think that they're, yeah. To be honest, like, I completely forgot that um, there was a B plot, kind of, for Santa's Little Helper. That's just how much it just kind of didn't feel like anything. Yeah, it's literally, oh, the old people are sad. We brought them Santa's little helper, and now he is old. Oh, and Lisa tried to save him, and now she's also old. It's it's a nothing, but I, like the Ray Imogeni story, I think saves the episode for me. Like this might be one of my favorites for the season. Oh yeah, it was a good episode. Mm-hmm. After that, we have the Heartbroken Kid where. Springfield Elementary gets new vending machines with unhealthy snacks, so Bart starts gaining weight and eventually has a heart attack. When he refuses to eat better, the family stages an intervention and sends him to an expensive weight loss camp. But to pay for it, they have to rent out the house as a youth hostel, and they are abused by the people staying there. Bart is shown his family's sacrifice. Uh, after he initially refuses to do the program, promises to do better, and then robs the money from the vending machine so his family is able to kick out the German youths at the hostel. This one... 
does kind of address the, oh, yeah, no, uh, schools are kind of advertising a whole bunch of unhealthy foods and putting them directly in the lines of kids who are going to be, like, super influenced to use it. Also just kind of turns into weird fat jokes for about half the episode, but also Albert Brooks returns, and it's Albert Brooks. Yeah, Albert Brooks is a solid hand. Mm-hmm. Albert Brooks should just play, like, a different character every season and then just nothing be mentioned about it ever. Only when, like, Matt Groening is ready to put, like, a bullet between the eyes of the show, just be like, okay, Albert Brooks, we're going to make a joke about that. But no, just, just bring him back as, like, a different, you know, character every um, every week. Also, a uh, heinous, coked-out man balloon comes back. Because Homer, when he's entertaining the Germans, sings 99 Red Balloons! Heinous coked out man balloons. 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 You thought I was going to do one thing and then I turned it into another thing. Exactly. Yep. I'm a delight. Yeah. Uh, let's see. My notes for this one. I like the joke of the army men screaming as he swept in the door. That was just a neat little gag. And that, the, the, the solid bit of this episode was, I will not bury another patient, but you're a pediatrician. Yeah, my head's been somewhere else this year. <laughs> 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 like, oh, shucks, I might have killed some kids. Ah, ah, foggy brain, you know how Mondays are. Oh, and uh, let's see, anything on? Yeah, no. No, that's it. Um, Back to back. This one, and don't fear the roofer, we see Hibbert take a strange turn to be incompetent. Yeah, they they really stopped using Dr. Nick for no real reason. And um, uh, I mean, it's a good it's a good comedic turn instead of just leaning on to the like Cosby similarity, mm-hmm. in my opinion. But um it just feels like a weird turn for the character. Not that I'm, like, completely, like, a Hibbert fan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, but it's like, well, if you want to make, like, bad doctor jokes, you know, Dr. Nick's right there. Dr. Nick would be more hilarious giving somebody electroshock therapy. I feel like that one is weirdly more appropriate for Dr. Hibbert, but like the the bit here would be more of a Dr. Nick one. Yeah. Uh, we then have a star is torn where Lisa enters a sing where Lisa enters a singing competition where Homer writes her a crowd pleasing song to help her win. But as the competition continues, he becomes an overbearing stage parent, so Lisa fires him. He moves on to coaching another competitor, and Lisa has a hard time without her dad, so she writes a song about missing Homer, who, it turns out, sabotaged his new protege, and she wins the competition. It's a a solid Lisa and Homer story. No no real need for a B-plot here. Yeah. I don't even remember if there was a B-plot. I don't believe there was. um, But we do get an American Idol-inspired episode. With Fantasia Barina? Yes, I think that's who that is. And that was like, a, I remember like her deal being um, like, she didn't win or she just kind of like dropped out. But um, like, I think Simon Cowell looked her, liked her so much, she just brought her under his wing. For positive reasons. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, William Hung. Yeah, sorry. Devin, my. Uh... Brendan co-host has bought William Hung's Christmas album. Oh, how is it? It's what you would expect it to be. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, like the bits in here are good. I like when we're setting up uh, what's his face to take a major fall in the show and uh, yeah. I love Lisa's imagined itchy and scratchy cartoon. Oh, with Wind Dancer? Yeah, it, it it stays true to being a little girl, caring about animals, 
but also being into cartoon violence. And I feel like that was kind of my childhood, and I felt sad. Uh, I looked her up on Wikipedia. Apparently Fantasia won her season. So I never watched American Idol, so fuck me, I guess. I mean uh, Is she released has she released anything? Like I, I didn't check. Like um, she's still actively making music. I think uh return to acting with the color purple. Uh she'll reprise her Marina will reprise her role as Seal on the twenty twenty three movie musical adaptation of The Color Purple. Um, yeah, so it looks like she's just kind of been more into acting than anything in recent years. Good for her. The yeah. music industry is horrible. Wow. Wait, was The Simpsons her first acting gig then? Um, I, I mean, that it probably had to be. Because it was, like, directly around the same time as, like, she just got discovered American Idol, right? Yeah. That's amazing. We so talk about her positively, unlike Justin and Kelly. Like, Justin has just become a non, you know, entity, I think. I don't know what the hell he's doing, but like, apparently, Harry Clarkson, you know, is just running her talk show and it's pretty, you know, whatever. Justin. Talk- I know what Justin did. He oh, became God. Little Sweet, the mascot for Cherry Dr. Pepper. Oh. Is is that actually a apparently yes? I have never heard of Little Sweet. For yeah. You have now. Uh-huh. And he was in a regional performance of Mamma Mia as Sam. Good for him. Yeah, sure. Good, good for him. Little, little golf clap. Uh, we then have, thank God it's Doomsday, where Homer starts obsessing about the rapture and thinks that the world will end in the next week and builds a following after one of his predictions comes true. He and his cult head to the Springfield Mesa, but when the rapture doesn't happen, Homer is deserted by his followers until he discovers a mistake in his prophecy and ends up the only one who gets raptured. He asks God to delay the rapture. That way he can go back to living with his family. Uh, rapture stuff is wild. It's bad. Uh, I wrote down in my notes, Left Below is tame compared to the parody we'd get today. I mean, it's not that far off from the Nicolas Cage Left Behind movie. Mm. Which... I went and saw in theaters with Devin. Oh, no. (laughs) On purpose. Well, yeah. It was not the worst movie that I had seen at that theater on an early Saturday morning. Oh. Josh Trank, Fantastic Four. (laughs) Well, I mean, yeah, that's that's to be expected. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, like, not a lot happens in here i appreciate that homer is making fun of the rapture like believers and he does have an incredibly complicated formula where changing one number changes everything but in such a small way and yeah it's it is what it is no b plot why did I choose to be gay? Because <laughs> uh, yeah, like you don't left have below, to... Left Below 2 would be like, I'm a drag queen and I'm going to molest so many... I don't know. I don't want to get that into it because... Yeah, let's let's not put that energy into the world. I was going to make a comment on you chose to be gay because you don't have future Smithers anti-gay medicine. Hmm. Ah. Oh. Mm-hmm. We're still, we're a... still waiting for 2013. Yep. Uh, we then have Home Away from Homer, where Ned rents out a room to two girls who turn out to be canned girls before that was really a thing. And everyone else in the town finds out before him. Ultimately, Marge tells Ned, uh, and he feels that nobody respects him, so he and the boys move to Humble Town, Pennsylvania, where the... Uh, where, 
move to Humboldtown, Pennsylvania. The new neighbor who moves into their house is very mean to the Simpsons, especially Homer. Meanwhile, back in Humboldtown, Ned is a rebel for refusing to cut off his mustache. And Homer ultimately comes back asking Flanders to move back to town, and Flanders kicks the ass of the new mean neighbor and moves back in because he understands real estate law. Yep. I'm not a landlord. I'm a land fella. Is going to be like the next thing on like realtor TikTok. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, listen, don't think of me as a landlord. Think of me as the land fella. I'm Christian. There's only one Lord. So I'm like your land fella. I mean, that's already a thing. Eric. Yeah, that's true. Uh, ask Jeeves, why does he suck? Boy, that's 2005. I don't even think Ask Jeeves was used very much in 2005. Like that was when Google was starting to be like, um, you know, Google was starting to, Google was Google. Yeah. Yeah. uh, It's, it's an interesting one. It is weird how the Vicky and Katya thing still kind of seems relevant. Yeah. Flanders doesn't know that Vicky and Katya do it in his spare room every Sunday. They tell him they're in church, but he doesn't know. Still, they're on their knees, and Flanders doesn't know. <laughs> Flanders doesn't I, know. I feel <laughs> Don't like... Don't tell Flanders. Yeah, this was, this also had, like, a couple really good needle drops with Bad Company and Freeze Frame at the end. Mm-hmm. I do feel like Flanders would be the person to know if you're not in church, though. Yeah, or, yeah that's true. I don't know. He sits in the front row, man. He does. Because you know who else knows? The big guy, and they talk. He's praying for y'all. But this is still kind of... he has, He's taking a break from abusively conservative Flanders so he can go back to kind of caring about people in a good way sometimes. Um... Yeah, the entire town that just makes uh, humble figures is a solid bit. I and do like that. Bubbles. I do like that. Um, a very big plot point is the fact that Flanders is secretly jacked. Oh, that's that's been established uh, since a streetcar named uh, Simpson. Oh yeah, but and and they've been rolling with it, but it's just mm-hmm. the fact that, you know, just, just seeing this person who's so outwardly like showing his muscles pretty buff and then Flanders, who looks like Flanders when he has a sweater on. Mm-hmm. Just take him down so fast. I have a piece of that body of Christ. Speaking of which, what's the next episode? <laughs> Uh, the Father of the Son and the Holy Guest Star, an episode that had to be delayed by an entire season because the old Pope died. Uh, Bart gets expelled and enrolls in Catholic school. Father Sean helps him to convert into Catholicism, and Homer gets pulled in too. Marge, Lovejoy, and Flanders work to bring Bart back, and this kicks off a fight between uh, the Prespa Lutherans and uh, the Catholics until Bart stops them, and then Bart's very basic ass religious philosophy leads to an actual religious war in a thousand years. It's it has some good bits, but doesn't have much to say. And Marge is actively kind of racist in this one. Marge doesn't want her family to go into Catholic heaven. Yeah, exactly. Because you know, us uh, us Italians are a separate race, just like the Mexican, uh, or or all Latino, you know, all Latino people, and the Irish, the Irish. or yeah. half the Irish. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, uh, my notes is this is the part where Eric expresses his experience with Catholicism and why his religion is now I say hail Satan to trigger evangelicals. Yeah, I went to Catholic school. It fucking sucked because I went there for eighth grade and all the kids there were assholes and I was seen as fresh meat. So that kind of threw any semblance of, oh, no, you know, you're going to get a better education. And, you know, the kids are more well behaved in religious schools because I actually the one of like a couple of the textbooks they use were just like the t- same textbooks I used for seventh grade in public school. But they're like a year behind on some of those things. 
Mm -hmm. and, yeah. So, uh, but Liam Neeson did good in this episode. Again, like these are still the era of the Simpsons when the guest stars like felt natural and were like a cool little bonus and not blah, blah, blah. The draw. Yeah. And they they have gotten better about doing that in recent seasons. Mm. But, you know, it's fine if you don't want to watch recent seasons. I would say, as a person who went to seminary several times, that didn't mess me up. Yeah. I know where to get the potluck. <laughs> I come from uh, the um, people doing the hat dance uh, section of uh, Catholic Heaven, and now now that I've I've been to the gatherings that look like that, so it's just kind of like I should feel offended, but also that kind of slaps. Yeah, no, I mean it looks a lot better than Marge's religious heaven, uh, which is also just. They've never really defined what faith uh, Lovejoy preaches and what the First Church of Springfield is. Yeah, because so. even like Protestant, there's you know lots of little subdivisions. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, oh. fun fact: the no meat on Friday thing was actually broken the year I went to uh, Catholic school because I, you know, it was like the first Friday after Lent, which is mm -hmm. usually. Because my understanding was, or at least how I was raised, was that you don't eat meat on Friday from Lent, which is, you know, a 40-day period from Ash Wednesday, which is usually like in late February, to Easter, which is, you know, April or, you know, late March. And apparently there's like several um, dissenting thoughts on this. One is that like no meat on Friday period but apparently when I went to Catholic school, I saw kids eating, like, meat sandwiches on Fridays. I'm like, well, wait, wait, what's going on? And he was like, oh, yeah, the Pope said, like, you, you don't have to do it anymore. So, um, yeah, that's bullshit. Yeah, I mean, also sometimes it's only no red meat on Fridays. And uh... to be honest, mm -hmm. Catholicism is full of hypocrites. <gasps> I wouldn't be yeah. surprised if, if you know, no, not I even out of pass. her. Yeah, I give her the pass. She's allowed to say it. I mean, no, that's that's perfectly fine. I I feel like they aren't even the cool type of hypocrites, though. It's not like uh, some of the more esoteric branches of Judaism where you get like bind and summon demons. That's how I you just get fucking Sunday. metal. That's Pokemon, baby. Which. The Catholic Church had issues with. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, speaking of problematic characters, new characters unlocked include Springfield Billy, Spider Moe, Paul Simon, Coach Clay Roberts, Amy Lavine Gonzalez, Moe Bart, Moe Lisa, Moe Maggie, Pants Man, Old Otto, Vice President Cletus, Patty with a Tail, Old Smithers, and Cell Phone Man. That brings us to episodes 229 through 235 of One Piece, which include Running Sea Train, The City of Water, Water 7. The Adventure in the City of Water, Aim for the Giant Shipyard. The Frankie Family and Iceberg. Galela Company, The Magnificent Dock, Number 1. The pirate kidnapping incident in the pirate ship waits for death. Rescuing a crewmate. The raid on the Frankie house. Quarrel in the moonlight. The pirate ship trembles in sadness. I love that Rush song. <laughs> <laughs> I was I, I like hesitated because I like, is it really Rush? Mm, I feel like another prog rock band would fit that better. Yeah, it's more Asia. Okay. As the sea train comes towards the Going Merry, they barely avoid it crashing into them before Yokozuna, the giant frog, fails to knock it off the tracks. Once they are safe from the train, they end up meeting Chimney, a young girl, Ganbei, her cat that is actually a rabbit, and Granny Kokoro, the alcoholic station agent. 
the trio explains that the train is called the Puffing Tom and it travels between the islands in the area. And the train can also lead them to Water 7, the city of water where the best shipwrights in the world are. She ends up sending them on with a city map and a letter of introduction to someone named Iceberg. And when they get there, the island is this massive, like, fountain city filled with canals where the people aren't really worried about pirates since everyone can just buy ships uh, no matter who they are. And so Nami takes Luffy and Usopp along to help him trade in the gold for cash. That way they don't need to worry about carrying all that gold with them. They end up renting bowls at a bowl rental shop that rents out Yagara bowls, which are kind of like tiny plesiosaur horses, and they explore the city, which is full of like stores and food and people and masks, and it's fun to have like environmental building in a way that we really didn't get it in Skypea. Yeah, I, I was very impressed by the world building during this whole arc. <laughs> like uh Oda talked about how this was specifically inspired by Venice. Yeah, I mean it's it's you can easily tell. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, we see another group of pirates who try to not pay for their ship, and the workers of the Galela company just kick the shit out of them, and it's it's wonderful. Uh, I, my notes include the soundtrack to this battle sounds like an, it's out of a '90s arcade racer, and the main theme sounds like the results screen music. <laughs> You're not wrong. Uh, back on the ship, Chopper and Robin wander off to go and look for books. Sanji heads off to get groceries, and Zoro stays behind to sleep on the ship. As Robin and Chopper explore the city, a masked stranger says CP9 to Robin, which leaves her shaken. Back on the ship, a group of bounty hunters known as the Frankie family try to take down Zoro for his bounty, but he easily dispatches them. And meanwhile, the Gold Gang reaches a money changer who initially tries to cheat the crew by only offering them a hundred million berry. But Nami knows that the gold is worth more and is able to argue for three hundred million. The news about this money that they have spreads to the other members of the Frankie family who start keeping tabs as they head to Galay La. When Luffy just tries to go in uh, to Galela, he is stopped by Kaku, a shipwright who kind of looks like Usopp and talks like an old man. He explains that Iceberg is the owner of the company and then heads off, and then heads off across the rooftops to go and assess the going merry. And when he gets there, Zoro just kind of thinks that he is Usopp, which is a solid bit. That yeah, that uh, pays off. So so the thing is, I watched this in Japanese with English subtitles, and, like, nothing really jumped out at me as old man. So that's probably, like, a joke if I either watched the English dub or knew more about Japanese dialects, I'd probably get more. It is something where, uh, like, in the manga, they translated very specifically because they're using honorifics in a way that young people don't, and... Uh, I believe, like, in the Four Kids dub, he uses words like whippersnappers and shakes of a lamb's tail. Okay. And uh, while Sanji is shopping, he sees Robin walking with the masked figure, but she disappears when he chases after them. Loudly, I might add. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. He's horny. Uh, The live-action show has come out, and Sanji is... A lot more charming because he isn't allowed to be as horny. Yeah, and uh, my notes here, it's like, uh, God, where was I? Um, it's like you see her on the ship every day, and it's like now is your chance to rizz her up when he, she she clearly looks like she's on some kind of like stealthy mission. You know, like she's telling the guy, it's like, yo, y'all want some? <laughs> I mean, it's also a town where everybody is very horny. Yeah. The town of 40 people, water horny. Yeah, that's true. Um, But he also does raise Robin and Nami whenever he sees them. Okay, yeah, I'm just saying, like, you're on the ship, dude, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, there, there are better chances to shoot your shot. I mean, she is also, like, over a decade older than him, I think. No. Yeah. I mean, I get it, Sanji. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Iceberg and Khalifa, his secretary, meet the gold team. Uh, they know who everyone on the crew is, and Iceberg is worried about Nika Robin, but kind of rushes past it and agrees to help them with a ship. Uh, he also cancels his meetings and, uh, like, helps him after getting Kokoro's letter, and he's kind of right that it is weird that she sent him a letter specifically with kisses on it. Uh, do either of y'all have a guess who Iceberg is based on? Hassan Piker. Or Hasanabi on Twitch. I don't know. That I didn't I know he kind of like looked familiar. I might have seen like an echo of something before, but I just couldn't quite put my face on it. I mean you gotta guess. Clooney? Yeah. Ha! Really? Uh huh. Uh, this was an arc where a lot of the people are based on specific people, some more obscure than the others. Uh, I'll see if I can find the image and post it to the Twitter or the Blue Sky whenever I get a Blue Sky invite for uh, that I don't need to give to an actual person. But uh, yeah. Iceberg is a fascinating and very strange man okay uh, yeah i know i also have like how they're you know this guy like you know got they, they sent a recommendation letter from somebody to yeah this guy like they need you know the mayor's help he's the mayor of the town the mayor the mayor and then immediately they're like wow you're a fucking shitty mayor you're lazy as shit dude you can't mayor for shit and like just <laughs> here's the thing like we're at the halfway point of the, the the description i think and it's like you know and i really got into this series because there's just so much world building you know lots of little beautiful things the episodes were well paced but i feel like i need to watch it from the beginning just so i could acclimate myself to just how fucking tactless all of these people are <laughs> <laughs> even the even like the cast of it's always sunny in philadelphia would be like dudes oh my god what is wrong with you uh i mean you're not wrong but i feel like they the cast of it's always sunny are more conniving a lot of the time or they they understand how they have to act to get things that they want right luffy does not luffy the sweet beautiful jungle child Luffy, I'm uh, just gonna fucking swing this big bag of money around. Mm -hmm. uh, so as they begin to enter the shipyard, Usopp realizes that two of the briefcase or that all three briefcases with money have vanished, stolen by members of the Frankie family. Meanwhile, Polly, another one of the dock workers who is being chased by his creditors, stumbles onto the Frankie family, accidentally steals the briefcases himself. And then when he refuses to give it back, Rob Lucci and his bird Hachari stop him and bring the money back. And they explain that the Frankie family are ship dismantlers and bounty hunters that are led by the mysterious Frankie. Uh, Polly and Rob Lucci get into a fight where they're evenly matched, and Luffy thinks that uh, Hachari has been saying everything the entire time because Rob Lucci doesn't say anything. Hattori, his shoulder bird, does, and then Nami realizes that Rob Lucci is using ventriloquism with the bird, and it's just like, yeah, sure, that's great. Like I said, there's just lots of fun little ideas of world building in here. Like, you know, like I love the little boats, how everyone got around on the little boats on top of the, the Yagaras. I'm like, that's mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. Those are fun things. And then the giant, like, sea elevator. And it's like, there's effort put into this. I love it. I watch an entire series just of this just here <laughs> so they uh enter into the shipyard and go on a tour where they see that everyone loves iceberg who uh turns out united these seven companies which formed galley law and then became the mayor of the town and luffy immediately invites iceberg to join the crew it is succinctly turned down which is brilliant uh meanwhile usopp and the money get nabbed by the frankie family Chopper, meanwhile, finds Sanji, who's looking for Robin, who vanished, and neither of them are really sure what happened. And a man returns with two briefcases that he gives back to Luffy, and that is when Kaku gives them the bad news that the going Mary can't be fixed because the keel is damaged, and they can't fix it. 
Uh, Janine? Yes. Mary's dying. Listen, I didn't sail on this ship. I haven't had these adventures. I haven't slept inside of it. I have no attachment for it. I'm fine if they get a new one, dog. Fair enough. Uh, but, more, but more than that, though, the mm -hmm. real life person, Mary, should die. <laughs> and he dies in the live action show. Good. And live his action body show is... can give me something I've always wanted. Dead oh, Mary. They also turned that whole arc into a uh, locked house murder attack, which works surprisingly well. Okay. Yeah, uh, the, the live action show does things differently in a way that benefits the medium, and I, I think people should check it out. Yeah, like I, after seeing, I, I don't know the lead actor's name uh, who plays Luffy by heart. You know, I saw he, like, what's that? Yeah. I saw like a video with him meeting Ichiro Oda, and it was just like so sweet. And, you know, like seeing him react like this and then like watching this. And even though I don't have like an attachment to One Piece at all, I pre like this was the first time I've actually sat down and watched it. You know, as, as I'm like seeing all of this stuff, I'm like, I get it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm probably, you know, I'm probably going to finish Water 7 and then just like, you know, OK, my that's curiosity sated. But like, I, I get why people like all of this. Um, Eric, I have some bad news for you. What's that? Uh, Water 7 leads directly into the next arc, so it's going to be like a hundred episodes. And it is going to beat the fuck out of you in good ways. Uh, but also, there's eventually like seven episodes in a row that are just like recaps. Okay. And so, you know, you'll, you'll get what you need to know. Okay. And like, Water 7 is like what a lot of people consider the high point of the series. Or a high point, so. Yeah, I saw, um, I mean, there's a video on YouTube where Hassan Piker, who I mentioned earlier, had um, the showrunner behind One Piece on his stream. And they did like a tier list of all the, uh, you know, various One Piece arcs. And Water 7 was apparently an S tier one. So I picked a good time to be on. Uh, you did. I picked a good time to get you on. Good. So, uh, yeah, the Mary can't be fixed because the heel is damaged and Iceberg suggests that they buy a new ship. and. Luffy eventually agrees. Uh, Corgi, meanwhile, a government official, takes Iceberg to talk away, uh, takes Iceberg away to talk about something in private, and ultimately we see him later on leaving disappointed. Lulu, another shipwright, thinks that he had seen Kaku with the Frankie family earlier, and that is when the gang realizes that was Usopp. Uh, so Luffy runs off to find Usopp, and Nami heads back to the ship so she can hide the remaining 100. Uh, million berry and on the way she finds the bloody Usopp who's devastated because he thinks that now without the money they aren't going to be able to fix the Mary and he's determined to get the money back and so Nami just kind of leaves him there because she can't really help him in any way and back at the Frankie house the base of the Frankie family they are celebrating with the money when Usopp returns and Frankie the mysterious masked leader leaves the group to beat the shit out of him while he goes off to spend that money. Nami, meanwhile, had already returned to the ship and directed Zoro, Sanji, and Chopper to the Frankie house. Luffy literally runs into them on the way. They find Usopp beaten outside of the Frankie house and just head in and start breaking through the members of the family, eventually destroying the house when they can't find out where to find Frankie and their money. And so that evening, everyone is reunited except for Robin, and Usopp gets back up, and he hears the plan to get a new ship with the remaining money, because he doesn't believe that they want to get rid of the Mary. And he's blaming himself because he refuses to believe the ship can't be fixed, and he thinks that the Galley Law Company is just lying to them for a sale, and Luffy, meanwhile, has made up his mind, and Sanji has to keep them from getting into a fight. And Luffy tries to apologize, but instead Usopp's like, I'm leaving the ship. I was never really a member, and the crew has no idea what's going on. Nami tries to go and stop him along with Sanji and Chopper, and Luffy's just watching. And Usopp finally just turns back and is like, all right, we're going to duel for the going Mary. And 
Luffy understands that like this is a thing where they can't back down because it's really important to both of them. Nami is worried about the crew falling apart, and that night at 10 p.m., Usopp shows up for his fight with Luffy, and he has a plan to win. And that's a cliffhanger, motherfuckers. I Janine, how you I get feel? I get Usopp so much right now. Um, number one, the the feeling that you have friends that can be able to do all these amazing things and like you don't really seem to have like talents that match on any scale so like you want to go out and you do something but you still get your ass kicked and then like at the very end of it like when you finally wake up you find out that this ship that the pretty girl gave you is gonna go away and i'm like if a pretty girl gave me a ship and I didn't show up on that ship the next time I saw her. I just ghost her. I just. <laughs> that's embarrassing. Oh no. It would it would hurt more people. Uh, I'm on I'm I'm on team Luffy on this one. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna just leave the going merry. Is the one smart thing Luffy said all batch of episodes. <laughs> And my last note for this is, God damn it, I'm hooked, so. Yeah, uh, like, there was a few episodes where it's like, I can end it here, I can end it here, but no, getting to Luffy versus Usopp, which is something that is seen in the credits, is like, yeah, no, that's, this is where we need to put the cliffhanger. So, who do you all think is going to be joining the crew? Janine? I mean uh i think it is let's see here hold on i gotta go to the i got to go to the name list to make sure that i got it right so i don't end up saying something stupid but some of these names are pretty fucking stupid <laughs> mm -hmm. polly i feel like polly goes to try to um his dream is to be out of debt, and uh, it happens pretty fast. So he like he'll join the crew, but then he'll like fuck off. I I fucking love Polly. Uh, when when the arc was coming out, there was lots of betting pools for like which one of these crew members is going to, or like which one of these Galila people is going to join the crew. And yeah, Polly is great. Tyrannosaurus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what oh. Luffy would fucking take a mouse and, and ask it to be a ship right <laughs> filler Luffy would oh uh, alright and then on the character sheet uh, one of these characters with five stars is not actually a five star character does anyone want to guess which one is not actually a five star character uh, the characters, for those of you listening at home, are Polly, Khalifa, Rabluchi, Kaku, and Hattori. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Polly. You know, like, that, he kind of fucks up everything for the crew. He has to be put in his place by, uh, you know, the actual five-star characters, so I'm, I'm gonna bump him down. I'm going to say Rob Lucci. I think that he dies, but Hattori mysteriously still talks. Fascinating. We will see how that goes in the future. And now we have 23 fucking characters match. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's power through this gang. All right. Up first, we have Chimney, the green-haired gremlin child. My Rodrigo style was Katie Anderson. I also had on Sophie Kristofsky and Wanda. Janine, who do you have? Um, I also have Sophie Kristofsky, but I also have Rodrigo style Kid Maggie. Mm. Oh, and Rodrigo style is when we use a character from that uh, we saw in the batch of Simpsons episodes for uh, a, cho a choice. 
and mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. I'm. Oof. I mean, Maggie's a solid one. I mean, Maggie's a solid pick. Maybe Katie Anderson as well. Um. God, there's a, there's a lot of minor Simpsons characters. I'm really got, like trying to rack my brain. If to, if um, you did not have one for this one, that is perfectly fine. We have a bunch to get through. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I feel like we could go with Sophie uh, Christofsky, or I'd be good with Katie Anderson. Well, we both got Sophie on our list. We do. So we both get a point? Yes. All right. Uh, we then have Gombe, the rabbit cat monstrosity. Janine, who do you have? Well, um, I have the sponsor bunny that only Barney could be able to see. Mm-hmm. And I also have um, Fuzzy Bunny. Oh, from Fuzzy Bunny's Guide to Sex? Yes. The very same. Uh, Eric, who do you have? Uh, I'm going to say either, I mean, Foxy the Fox Network, Fox, because, listen, I forgot a lot of Simpsons, um, or Scratchy's eventual bastard child that he had with Itchy, or I'm sorry, Scratchy's wife's uh, bastard child that he will have with Itchy. It's like, they're both cross-species monstrosities. Is that actually something that is seen in The Simpsons or a purely hypothetical? I'm just going to go with purely hypothetical. Okay, it, it does need to appear in the episode, so I, I, I'm going to have to vote you down for that one. Uh, well, the, we do have, uh, if we want to look at it, um, Scratchy does have kids in an episode of Itchy and Scratchy, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. So I feel uh, like they die. That could be also. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the ones that I have are the actual Trix Rabbit, Yoda, or the Rodrigo style is the dog cat, which is seen in an ad in uh, future drama where it's half dog, half cat. Like cat dog. Mm. Yoda's a choice. Let's talk about Yoda. I mean, Yoda's the right level of fucked up. <laughs> and you know who is as beautiful or and you know who is as wise as Yoda? Marge, who has blue hair. And Gonbei is also blue. Using Homer's rapture logic, I can see where it fits. Are, are we good with Yoda? Yeah. Yeah, let's Yoda it up. All right. We then have Granny Kakara. Uh, Eric, who do you have for Granny Kakara? I mean, like, she just gives off so much Barney Gumble vibes because I think Barney actually did. Wasn't Barney like one of the what drive a monorail at some point? Or, um, mm-hmm. yeah. So I think that was, you know, in the episode. So I'm just saying that's like a pretty good fit if we are allowed, you know, gender swapping. I mean, gender is a. Believe it, I duplicated the wrong thing. I mean, gender is an abstract concept. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I still have regrets over not picking Gavin's mom as our accent, Morgan. Mm-hmm. Gavin. Uh, and have we actually used... No, we have only used high school, Barney Gumble. So... Uh, that is an acceptable suggestion. Uh, the ones that I had, my Rodrigo style was old Mrs. Krabappel. I also had on Mrs. Muntz and Starla Starbeam. Janine, who do you have? I have uh, Barney's mom and Sherry and Terry's mom. But to be honest, I don't know if we seen her in this bar i just kind of like yeah. was looking up moms and just throwing stuff down oh and what's this uh we had fan suggestions that came in from our discord and other sources 
Uh, Atticus suggested Crazy Cat Lady or Mrs. Zorker. That's Uter's mom. And that one welder guy suggested Mrs. Gumble as well. I think Mrs. Gumble has like the right energy. Ooh, wait, hold on. Uter's mom pile? Uter's mom. No, no, no. Don't Uter's don't Uter pile Uter's mom. Let's talk about Uter's mom. Uter's mom has, has got it going, going on. on. <laughs> it's all I want, and she just wants her son. Skinner, can't you see? This is just a mom who needs something. Wow. I know it might be wrong, but Johnny loves Uter's mom. Yeah, this is this has been a very big episode for um for like early two thousands pop rock references. It is. I'm glad they're finally getting their due. Exactly. So, my, I, I know you love an Uter. I, I know we love the Uter joke, but oh, and shit, we are getting close to Hoykel and Michael. Um, Miss Gumble is an alcoholic, and Granny Kokoro is very much an alcoholic. Mm. And also, Mrs. Gumble is in the Navy. I don't know, Mrs. Gumble. That does sound. Mm. Uh, there's a joke uh, when Homer joins the Navy where it's like, does your mom work on the ship? And then Marty's like, my mom does. You can't talk to my son like that. You gotta poke him with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> Even a similar belt. Oh, God, yeah. And it does fit within the... Um... The vibes and everything. Yeah, so I think we gotta go with Mrs. Gumble. So... That means that that one welder guy will make, get to make a suggestion for the next episode. We then have Polly! Hey, Polly! Who is the anti Sanji. He does not want to see girls in skirts. Uh, my suggestions for him are. Uh, one of my, I had a group theme for the Carpenters of Water 7 uh, as the yo-yo champion, so he would be Mr. Amazing. I also have Vietnam-era Seymour Skinner, uh, the contractor who uh, helped to redesign the kitchen but was also gay, and then my Rodrigo style was Andre the Angel for Homer in Heaven. Janine, who do you have? I have Teen Mo from The Way We Weren't. Teen Mo. Oh. Mm -hmm. And is that your only suggestion? It is. Oh. I just really like Teen Mo. Teen Mo! Yeah. Uh, Eric, who do you have for Polly? Uh, I think my Rodrigo style pick was Old Ground's Keeper Willie or Ray Magini. I, you know, because like Old Ground Keeper Willie, I think think might fit a bit better because, um, you know, because both seem very like wily and like more likely to just bitch about like he probably still like probably shouts at you know, ah, your shirt skirt, skirt is too short, you know, like even in his old age. So you know, he'd probably carry that torch into his later years. Sadly. Hmm. Interesting. I feel like Polly is too old for a teen Mo. We have teen, like young adult characters paired as children. I mean, weirdly enough, if you wanted to go with it, I'd give you the credit, but you could just go with classic Mo for Polly, and I think that would be hilarious. Just classic Mo? Cla uh, I assume we've not used classic Mo. Uh, we have used Mo Zip and Uncle Mo, but not classic Mo. Huh, that feels like a lot to blow classic Mo. Uh, what about Kidmo from his boxing days. Oh. You know, he was, like was kid. He became Kid yeah, Bruce. He was, like, he was a young adult at that time. That's true. 
Let me see. Watching the episode without sound. Yeah, you know what? I can go with Kid Mo. I can go with Kid Mo, the boxer specifically. Hell yeah. Kid Mo and then brackets boxer. Points for Janine. Nice. All right. We then have Mikazuki, who weirdly, I think, shows up in the first season of the One Piece live action anime. Oh. Just as like a tertiary, as a background character. Tertiary. Uh, who do you have, Janine? Nobody. This is one of the ones that I um, didn't have time for, but I would love to hear yours. Eric, who do you have? My off the wall one was the Emperor of Japan because uh, Japan Japanese themed leader and gets easily dispatched. <laughs> I, Eric, I I have bad news. I'm going to have to put the Emperor of Japan in your pile. <laughs> there, you who? Uh, do I do I need to know who you're saving the Emperor of Japan for? Janine. This year, they finally got out of their like four-year-long manga Japan arc. That's a long time to sit on the Emperor of Japan. Yeah, hopefully he can get up after this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all I'm right. Pretty tall and handsome too. Uh, the suggestions that I had, my Rodrigo style was Z Dog. Uh, I also had the a pirate captain, Gerald Ford, and Horst, uh, one of the Germans who takes over the plant. And let me drop in the photo of the pirate captain into our Discord. Or actually, I can just yeah, I'll put it in Discord. Uh, the one on the left with, like, four different parrots on his shoulder. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's from the one where, uh, they take over Burns' mansion and then... International Monkey waters, Bites. okay. Yeah. I, I think these guys might be, like, a key to Frankie... Fa I don't know, I... It was like, now you reminded me of these guys. I was like, oh, okay. Hmm, interesting. So, Janine, do any of mine speak for you? Uh, I don't know. Maybe Gerald Ford. I mean, Z Dog is the white guy with the Dr. Seuss hat. Yeah, but Gerald Ford is just a funny choice. All right, yeah, let's let's burn Gerald Ford. He knows what he did. <laughs> I mean, maybe Jimmy Carter we could fight on, you know, as a better one, but mm, Jimmy yeah, Carter Gerald will Ford. get Jimmy Carter will get what he fucking deserves, Eric. <laughs> He's history's greatest monster. Uh, we then have Iceberg. The Maya. The Maya. Eric, who do you have for Iceberg? Ironically, I have Jimmy Carter as one of my choices, or my Rodrigo style pick is Frank Gehry. Uh, both beloved men who love building shit and are, you know, uh, see our main cast on a large project. Uh, so, fun fact. Frank Gehry was my Rodrigo style for this. I also had uh, Ted Carpenter, one of the yo-yo champions, and Hans, uh, the other German plant owner. Janine? I only had one name, uh -huh. and it was Frank Gehry. <laughs> Gary! All right, so we got a... Wah, wah, wah. All three. We've got a... Dun, 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 dun. Frank Gary three-way. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, I cannot wait to uh for megaplex to be over so like uh, all right all of the money i have to put towards shit like i can actually you know so i spend a lot of money on megaplex getting new merch there's lots of you know like little stuff got to refill the table and everything and practice and whatever i'm getting baller's gate three the week after megaplex and doing an oi run of that game yeah yeah because you can play as dry with that one Uh uh-huh and monks so that makes sense Drow, uh, Ori was Eric's hunk Drow monk who also had a book of erotic furniture. Yes. No, it had, you know, I think it, like the canonical name was Alyssa Tree's Cookbook, and it was just how to fuck and how to build furniture. That's and, right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. There was, I mean, some of the furniture was erotic. Yeah. Uh, we then have Khalifa, and uh, I had three suggestions. One of those was Sparkle. The yo-yo champion. I also have Della, who was uh, Lionel Hutz's secretary, and then my Rodrigo style was Amy Levine Gonzalez, a PBS host. Devine, who you got? Um, I also had Della, but <laughs> for my from for my Rodrigo style, I had Robot Marge. Eric, who do you have? Um, I, I think my Rodrigo style also was uh, Robot Marge, and Oh God! I think um, I forgot the other one I had for this episode. Oh well. Luke, Fair enough. Give it to Robot Marge. I don't remember what Robot Marge looks like. Hold on. Because it's not Marge becomes a robot. Then something happens. Do 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 do. It's like a Marge and a Terminator together. Yeah. Well, that's. I think that's a different one though, because. Okay, yeah, there have been multiple Marge robots. Then we oh. have multiple ones to choose from. <laughs> uh, what episode was this one in? The one we're referring to? Yeah. Uh, I think it was in the Heartbroke Kid. Marge Bod. Yes, Marge Bod. Okay, yeah, that's... Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that one is Terminator-esque, but not the same as another one. <laughs> you know what? Kids... Y'all have fun with this when it it when stuff is going to start getting wild. I I I look forward to protecting Mike from having to draw anything lascivious. Uh we didn't have Tyrannosaurus. Everyone loves Tyrannosaurus. Yeah, Tyrannosaurus is the best character in the series. Uh Janine, who do you have for Tyrannosaurus? I got two. I have first uh Itchy the Lucky Mouse. From mm-hmm. Manhattan Madness. Um, mm-hmm. Watch out, Itchy. He is Irish. And Rizzo, uh, a rat that's let loose from Old Man in the Sea Sedudent. Fair enough. Eric, who do you have? A lot of mine are focused on like the more recent one, the you know Rodrigo styles. And so I went with mm-hmm. Lisa's hamster. Mm-hmm. Both small animals you can fit in your pocket. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, I had Mouse Homer from one of the couch gags, and I also had Lisa's hamster. I think Lisa's hamster is very cute, and uh, Tyrannosaurus is a friend. Yeah. Tyrannosaurus is, I believe, a... What is his classification? Oh. He is not actually classified as a non-dangerous creature. But his favorite food is spinach. Mm. Uh, So yeah, I'm on Team Lisa's Hamster. All right, make it the the Lisa's Hamster. All right. We then have Kaku. Everyone loves Kaku. 
Yeah. Uh, who do you have for Kaku, Eric? Uh, I went with Ray Magini on this one because very flaky, uh, cannot be in the same place for very long. And while competent, yeah, like, you know, he can just be anywhere at any time. So, um, and also I think he does have a bit of a schnoz like, uh, like Ray Romano does. So, or maybe Ray Romano looks different in my imagination. My, mm-hmm. uh, my Magini Mation. <laughs> <laughs> Imagination. Yes. Uh, I had Zero Gravity, another yo yo champion. Uh, Team Millhouse, not as my Rodrigo style, but just putting him on for some reason. And then uh, St. Sebastian as my Rodrigo pick. Because I'd like to see him pierce with some uh, arrows. Janine, who do you have for Kaku? Um, oh, I had him as Team Millhouse because Millhouse is our Usopp. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, mm. and we already used uh, Shelbyville, Millhouse. Ooh, that would have been good in this one. Um, well, when it comes to jumping off roofs, elements I have Bartman. Mm-hmm. But for being on a roof, I have the Ray Magini as my Rodrigo style. Uh, you know what? I'm fun using Ray Magini for uh, Kaku. So, the Rays have it. We yes. then have a, a Rabalucci. I, I think bacon, I'm... egg, and cheese. Bacon, egg, and cheese. <laughs> uh if you've not seen T- uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Meet and Mayhem, you should go and see that. Okay. It's it's delightful. Uh, it's very much good teen energy. Uh, my suggestions that I had for Rob Lucci are Ray Magini, who is my uh, Rodrigo style. I also have the Cobra, another yo-yo champion. Uh, Anton Lubchenko, which I have in brackets here, no good reason, and then World War II Mr. Burns, because they have similar hair. Janine, who do you have? The package deal with Hattori. Mm-hmm. But I have the mustached Krusty, because my Hattori is the horrible puppet that he uses to scare the mm-hmm. children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was thinking. I, long... Oh no! Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I had no other suggestions for either. I feel very passionate about my decision. I, I mean, the only like ventriloquist I could remember in the series is Gabo and his owner. Gabo, I'm sorry, Gabo yeah. and his owner. So like th- that, those are Arthur my choices. Crandall. Yes. Mm-hmm. I don't have to type that. I just have to copy it over from another one. Well, what's this? We have more suggestions. Mike P, that one welder guy, and Atticus all suggested Arthur Crandall. Uh, Also, uh, Atticus suggested Dolph Starbeam. Now, I want to see if I can turn you all because my Hattori suggestion that could potentially go with my World War II Mr. Burns is Canary M. Burns. Canary M. Burns. Uh, That is the Canary who technically owns the power plant. Huh. And, like, World War II Burns is pretty jacked and has, like, a similar vibe. Because I, I, I feel like Arthur Crandall is a bit too easy of a pick. Yeah. Hmm. I guess. But... Have we considered the horrible cr- puppet? <sighs> Let me look at the photos that have been plastered in our suggestions thread. Uh yeah, that was uh one that one welder guy's other suggestion as well. God, I hate that puppet. 
I don't want to see that thing talk. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Yeah. That th that's mm -hmm. That is not a cute bird. But Canary M. Burns is. Yes. And I I feel like getting Burns and Canary M. Burns together would be delightful. I don't know. I didn't I don't remember what World War II Burns looked like, but I I, I think I guess if it must be a bird. Mm -hmm. I'm just because I'm just trying to think. Like, is there anybody later that you know has an even more like obvious and ridiculous like ventriloquist gimmick that was like, no, that guy's Gabo. Yes. Okay. Jesus fuck. I'm like, here's the thing. From what I know about this series, I actually believe you. Because like, there probably is somebody with like a more blatant and more stupid ventriloquist gimmick where it's like oh this guy's just shy so he uses you know the bird to do his talking oh there is a person who literally turns people into toys and it is horrific okay interesting interesting mm -hmm. the fuck is this show one piece um well before we settle both uh i also had pigeon jasper Photographs as my other canary in Burns. Uh, Eric, do you have any other suggestions for uh, Hattori? No. Okay. So, have I sold you all on my pair of World War II Burns and Canary in Burns? I suppose, but only because you promised us something even more terrifying in the future. Yeah. Believe me, it's coming. Uh, we then have Peeply, uh, Peeply Lulu, and you all know who Peeply Lulu is based on, right? Freddie Mercury. Freddie. I was close. Are you Freddie? Are you a little bit Freddie? Yes, I am! <laughs> um, wow, I lost uh, track of whose turn it is. Yeah, we we did two in a row there, so we'll just reset. Uh, my suggestions are Rodrigo style Dean Martin. I have set on Paul McCartney and Mick Jigger. Janine, who do you have? I went with gay characters. Uh, first off was Julio Franco, which mm -hmm. is just basically um, Hank Azaria's character in the birdcage like yeah. it's referenced so well that it just looks like hank azaria's like character like from the birdcage like it looks like hank azaria mm -hmm. and it just becomes a recurring character and hank azaria just has to like voice a character that looks like a younger version of himself now but just gay it just yeah. seems like that's just kind of like a weird thing that just became another thing anyway mm -hmm. uh from the same episode that julio comes out in uh we have the gay colonel that is gay for mole man <laughs> just like bart and lisa yeah uh eric who do you have i went with roscoe who is the owner or or i guess the guy that runs the ajax steel mill we work hard we play hard exactly uh, they got the mustache. That's like what made me. I was like, I don't know. Wait a second. Wasn't there like the age? Wasn't there like a mustache guy who ran the steel mill? Yeah. I have up. bad news, Eric. We What's have it? used Roscoe. Damn it. I know. Check out the gay colonel, though. Yeah. Uh, if we aren't going to go uh, with a like pop star yeah let's go gay colonel he also has a mustache cool all right uh up next we have tilestone or tileston 
who has a big beard and tattoos, and he could crush me, please. Uh, who do you have for Tilestone, Janine? Ah, uh, that's one of the names I don't have. Oh. Yep. Eric. Uh, I didn't really have one selected here, but I figured I'd go with uh, Father Sean, a.k.a. Uh, Liam Neeson, because just both hot. Okay, Fair. I can see it. Uh, my suggestions were Wade Boggs, laying unconscious on the ballroom tile stone, and my Rodrigo style was St. Peter, because I was trying to find someone who had a beard, and St. Peter, he got a beard. I will post the photo to argue my point. Discord. He is a guy who is dismissive about Catholic heaven. <laughs> I'm going to say, guy, you know, now that you posted it in our chat, guy, big guy with a beard and a ponytail, I'd say uh, in the, the pirate picture you posted, third mm -hmm. one from the left. Yeah, yeah, uh, I can, I can see that. International Waters Pirate Three. Yeah. Janine, are you good with International Pirate Waters Three? Sure. Yeah, that's the right amount of meat. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, International Waters Pirate Number Three. I was saying International Pirate Waters Three. That's. That's not a thing. That's John Waters' cousin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then we're getting into Frankie family and these fucked up boys. First we have Zumbai. Eric, who do you have for Zumbai? Uh, I didn't have anody for Zumbai because it was like, they, they all just kind of like lumped in a morass for me. And I didn't know that Zumbai was his proper name. He's got a name. Uh, my suggestions were Wallet Thief, and my Rodrigo style was Scammer. Jane, who do you have? Tab Spangler. My mind is drawing a blank on Tab. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, you know what? He teaches life lessons. I can, I can get behind... Oh wait, no. I have a, I have Tab Spangler. For uh, another one on here. Yeah, you know what? That's fine. Uh, we all good with Tab Spangler? Yeah. Yeah. Frankie House. Uh, it probably would have been best to like go into like some season one freaks, but uh, <laughs> most of them. Are just going to be background bits. Uh, we then have Kiev or Kiev. Kievan. Where is my son Kievan? Uh, who do you have for Kiev, Janine? Who? Um, actually, for the next four. Mm -hmm. five, you got a theme? Six. Huh? You got a grouping? No, I don't have anything. Um, oh, no. Yep. I just realized that I actually had uh, deleted some of these names because I'm looking inside of the fucking image gallery that you put together. I thank uh -huh. you for those. And realizing that the list that I made for myself to start Pairing names did off not with, did not have them, so oh no, yeah, I fucked up there for several of these. Uh, so that's up through Ishigo Shitemana. Yep. Or what is the next one? Okay, so you don't have names for Ishigo Shitemana. Oh no, that one. Um, that one you do, but I not have, the yeah, other. Yeah. 
Okay. Eric, do you have anyone for these? Uh, I only, I do have the perfect one for the next one, but not. Uh, for Tamagon? Yeah, not, yeah. But not Shozo or Cop? No. All right. So, uh, my Kiev suggestions were Lonely Veteran, who was part of the Ship of Lost Souls. Uh, this was also where my Rodrigo style was Tab Spangler. Um, for Tamagon, I had Lonely Man, also from the Ship of Lost Souls. I also had the e I also had Egg Council Egg. And then I had uh, Assistant Principal Kearney as my Rodrigo style. Who do you have for Tamagon, Eric? Yeah, I had Egg Council Egg. Oh, yeah, Egg Council Egg has to be our guy who is an egg. And then we can regret having used him years down the line. I'm just saying, uh, like, stupid ventriloquist has a lot more potential than, like, okay, I can see, like, the ventriloquist guy getting even crazier, but I can't mm -hmm. see egg guy getting much more than this. Fair. Uh, my Shulzo, who's another member of the Frankie family, I had the accordion player from the Ship of Lost Souls, and then I had Kevin, uh, who uh, was my Rodrigo style. Don't remember who Kevin was. Uh, luckily, I have remembered. Oh, yeah, Kevin was the kid who Homer steals answers from and tries to outshine. Oh. And then uh, for Cop, I had either the arsonist. Um, who uh, tried to admit that he burnt down... Uh, a building and Chief Wiggum didn't believe him. Uh, or uh, Emperor Diocletian. And none of y'all, none of y'all came prepared for what I was bringing. So I, do I just get to assign to everyone except for the Aid Council League? Yeah. Kind of. Oh. I mean, like, if I really had like much of a say of which one you could be able to elect to wear i like yeah. an arsonist yeah uh i think arsonist works better than emperor diocletian and the only viable answer that we had between lonely veteran or for uh yeah was a uh, lonely veteran so then that just brings us to is our Sholzo going to be the accordion player or kevin Kevin. Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. Kevin. We forgot about Kevin. And that's why Luke always says it's great to win by default. All right, we then have Ishigo Shitimana, the money changer who tries to cheat the crew out of their money. Uh, I had First Bank of Springfield manager, a la George Bailey. Uh, the banker with the house costume, or uh, Mr. Thompson, who I believe was the left behind. Let me double check. Uh, yeah, who was the left behind uh, star? Janine, who do you have for Ishigo Shitamana? I have Scammer. <laughs> Beautiful. Eric. I have Scammer and Mr. Snrub, uh, the mustachioed, like, Mr. Burns doppelganger. Uh, I like the way that you? Snrub thinks. Yeah. I feel like Scammer is very appropriate, especially since that's a Rodrigo style. Yeah. Rodrigo style. Guy is scamming. The name is Scammer. Is a perfect match made in heaven. Uh huh. That's how you win a dog show. We then have Corgi, a government agent who we don't know much about yet. Uh, who do you have for Corgi, Janine? I have Rich Texan. Mm -hmm. And that's it. 
Eric, who do you have? I went with the prison warden. Interesting. Um, Ooh, that that means that there's a something plot relevant to that. Ooh. I mean, we are going to get a uh, prison uh, arc eventually. Mm. Um, but there's no shortage of different prison things that the Simpsons have done. No, there 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 isn't. I just wanted to make sure that I was picturing the correct warden. But you know, I like to be thorough about these things. That's that is what I like to do. Did you know that Frank Gehry is so far the first and only architect who voiced a character on The Simpsons? What? Oh, okay. Oh, the Simpsons fandom site is failing me once again, so I need to go to the other Simpsons wiki. Wiki Simpsons, the betterish one? I, I, I forget. Do we actually see a warden? I don't know, because we have to see a warden. Yeah, inside the Burns' prison that we just had Rodrigo style. That was the person that was hosing down Homer when he first came in. I am attempting to differentiate which warden is which. Uh, I have to go to Frankie Yak now. <laughs> wow. The different Simpsons fan sites we have to dig through. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do when uh, we run out of episodes that are on here because I have referenced it so many times. Okay. Homer gets arrested. Uh, yeah, that's not the warden. Mm. No, I That is not... office. Oh, wait, who was it? That's Officer Crack Me. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what I was thinking of. Damn it. Yeah. Crack me. Okay. No, I saw it over here. I just The name slipped me. I'm sorry. We try and run a clean house here, Eric. And you're I know, bringing I drugs know. in. You're bringing incorrect Simpsons names. Uh, the suggestions that I have are Ray Patterson, Avril Ward, and then my Rodrigo side was Coach Clay Roberts. Ooh. Uh, Ray Patterson was the sanitation person who Homer got kicked out. But I feel like Coach Clay Roberts has kind of the right build and energy. I'm going to look up Ray Patterson real quick. He is voiced by Steve Martin. And uh, Avril Ward is the uh, American ambassador to Australia. I mean, do we see this character again, or I mean, I'm I'm not uh, like trying Cor to fish for spoilers or anything. I'm just trying oh to no, see, like, Corgi Corgi is going to say around this arc. Okay, because I'm just trying to see like how high up the ladder of you know the vast array of Simpsons characters we should go for this. Like Coach Clay Roberts is a good fit in terms of canon. Okay. Uh, I was really hoping to get Coach Clay on some like. Really big asshole. I mean, Corgi is going to 
turn out to be a bit of an asshole. Uh, we can save him, though. I mean, Ray Patterson is a guy who's kind of by the book and is willing to just kind of screw over people when they don't listen to his logic, mm. which actually fits more with what we're going to see of Corgi. Okay. I could, I could swing that. All right, then, Ray Patterson. We only have three more to go. This is going to be our longest episode yet. Uh, we have Mozu and Kiwi. Also known as the Square Sisters, because they got big old square hair. Uh, I I have three different sets. Uh, no, I have four different sets of Damn. characters. Mm-hmm. I had Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. I had Teen Patty and Selma. I had Lisa's Wedding Maggie and Future Drama Maggie, and then my Rodrigo style was Teen Sherry and Teen Terry. Janine, who do you have? I only have Teen Sherry and Teen Mary. It's Teen Sherry and Teen Sherry and Terry. Yeah. <laughs> you can't wait for Teen Mary to die. Oh my god, I will kill Teen Mary with my own hands. Uh-huh. That's Mary before the horns came in. And Eric, who do you have? Uh, I had Teen Mary and Teen Sherry, and then I also had Mo Maggie and Mo Lisa. <laughs> Because I was like, oh, <laughs> we're, you know, they're, they're sisters and have weird hair. Sure, let's go with that. So now, you know, I kind of, I kind of like Mo Maggie and Mo Lisa now. So I, I want to push because uh, we kind of want the weird outsider rockers for these characters. That uh, the two Maggies from the future kind of fit that well, and we have not seen them talk yet. Hmm. Why are we naming them then? If they, if that's if if their vibe has not yet been established. You've seen enough of their vibe, I think. Like Frankie we're holding off on. Frankie is going to be the star of the next episode. Frankie we will go to war over. Frankie will get like Patton potentially frustrated with us. Because he has had a called shot for since we hired him on. Hmm. Okay. We all had down the Sherry and Terry. Yeah. Is there any particular reason why we should not flip the switch on Teen Sherry and Terry. They're teen pregnant. We can't execute them if they're teen pregnant, Janine. I can do anything, okay? Feminism. You're right. I am sorry. I'll, I'll be a good ally. All of us get points for Teen Terry and Sherry. <laughs> for Teen Sherry and Terry. Uh, I have Sherry as Mozu and Terry as Kiwi, if that works for everybody. Yes. Mm. Yeah. All right. And then last, we have the Kariki Destroyers, who are just three very big dudes who are part of the Frankie family. Uh, I had Roger Daltrey, John Entwistle, and Pete Townsend of The Who, or Pius Riot, just three members from that group. Janine, who do you have? I got Pious Riot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Eric? It's just too funny of a joke for me. Yeah, I, I went with Pious Riot, uh, the three manses at the, the mall, the milkshake man, hot dog man, and cell phone man. Cause I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. Why not? And uh, like just three of the Transformers from the couch gag because, you know, like Frankie built them so they're probably half robots or some shit. Uh, well, I feel like we got to go with Pius Riot. So, uh, this I think is the most we have ever had. Are all three people agree? Because we got four of them on together. I mean, the well, Rodrigo pretty... style has been helping us like a lot on that. It it has. Uh, yeah. So our chimney is Sophie Krasovsky, our Ganbe is Yoda, our Kokoro is Ms. Gumbel, our Polly is Kidmo the Boxer, our 
Uh, Mikazuki is Gerald, Ford, our Iceberg is Frank Gary, our Kalipa is Robot Marge, our Tyrannosaurus is Lisa's Hamster, our Kaku is Ray Machini, our Rob Lucci is World War II Burns, our Hattori is Canary M. Burns, our Peepley Lulu is Gay Colonel, our Tyosone is International Waters Pirate Number 3, our Zombie is Tab Spangler, our Kiev is Lonely Veteran, our Tamagot is Egg Council Egg, our Schultzo is Kevin, our Cop is Arsonist, our Ishigo Shitamana is Scammer. Our Corgi is Ray Patterson. Our Mozu is Team Cherry. Our Kiwi is Team Terry. And our Kirikiri Destroyers is Pious Riot. Woo! Uh, that was a... That was a mouthful. Yeah, there, there's a lot. There was a lot there. And uh, next time, I don't think we have as much, which is a good thing. But, you know, we're going to have a big one. We're going to have some big stuff going down. Uh, and I think the hard part is we aren't going to have any new Simpsons for that episode. Let me double check. Yeah. Uh, no new Simpsons and only five characters. All no. right. That's manageable. Mm -hmm. And also no special guest. So. Uh, yeah. That is... Excuse me. That is the episode. Eric, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me pretty much everywhere. Uh, my main site is rhythmbaster.rocks because I rock so hard I have to put it in the URL. I also <laughs> stream regularly on Twitch. I am on uh, Twitter, Mastodon, Blue oh, Sky, all, all the big sites. Sorry, a centipede just fell from the ceiling in front of me and I was like, oh my god, what the fuck is that? <laughs> it is dead now. Thank god I have all these paper towels. Holy fuck. I guess you're never really safe. So, you were saying about Twitter, Mastodon. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. That's okay, yeah. Um, I, You can also find my music on Spotify, Bandcamp, rhythmmaster.bandcamp.com, um available on every streaming platform so you know I, i'm i'm everywhere baby Let's see and uh, yeah that's oh, it no. uh and janine where can you be found um twitter and blue sky as janine juliet I don't know about other stuff because I'm still learning how to use other social media sites and can't commit to one until I find out which one's going to stay alive after the wars. That That is completely valid. I do uh, like co yeah. right now, though. Mm -hmm. Uh... Well, you can find me on most sites as Coltreg, that's K O L uh that is K-O-L-P-R-E-G, or you can go to my website, lukehair.com, L-U-K-E-H-E-R-R dot com. Uh yeah. Uh Mike Patton, our artist, you can find most places at Patton Pending, P-A-T-T-E-N-P-E-N-D-I-N-G. So get ready for that. And yeah, Dumb and Stone, we update every other week. And we'll be back in two more weeks with shit going wild. Uh, if you haven't, please consider leaving a review. Tell your friends about us. Because if you're like, hey, there's a weird podcast that discusses The Simpsons in One Piece, they'll probably be like, oh, cool. And we're quicker to get through One Piece than watching the show. So uh, that wraps us up. We will see you in another two weeks as Luffy and Usopp fight, and uh, we 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 have a big pervert appear. Eric, do you want to give me a yeah? Yeah. Smooth sailing. Peace. <laughs>